okay, to change it. It's pretty simple. You can see my list of symbols here. IBFX has, I believe, 26 symbols in total. Most of us aren't probably going to ever do more than, much more than with, I'd say, 8, 10, maybe a dozen. But they're there. The availability is there, which is great. If I go ahead and take a symbol highlighted here and just drag it on top, it'll go ahead and change it. So I changed it from the Euro US dollar, aka the fiber, and drag and drop to the dollar yen. Pretty pretty simple, right? Okay. I think probably the most important thing is the customization, because I don't think any of us are going to stay within this view. All right. So let's customize not only our, our symbol list, but our charts. This window here is the market watch. These are all the symbols, the bid, the ask. I can, I can actually add a few other columns. If you right click the market watch window, you can see that I can show the entire list of symbols. I can hide a certain the symbols. I can take a look at some preset collections of symbols. I can create my own list of symbols. Okay. So if there are, say, eight or ten particular symbols that you like, you can actually create a set. The other thing you can do is right-click any one of the symbols, and you, and you can hide it individually. All right? My advice usually is don't distract yourself with information that you're not necessarily going to use or need. If there are symbols that you are absolutely sure that you don't want to trade, go ahead and remove it. I'll give you a great example. Uh, a friend of mine who's on the platform right now was noticing from, from past trades that he was getting his you-know-what handed to him by, by the cable, by the British pound U.S. dollar. So he figured for now, to avoid temptation, he just went ahead and hid it from his market watch. He took it out of his field of vision, and he's much happier with his results because he took out the problem child for him. Now, I have other people who love the cable, right? But if you know you want to focus on certain pairs. Make sure you customize this platform to speak to you. Okay, take the time for the customization. It'll really help you in the long run. A couple other things you can add to the market watch window is time, which I actually like having the time. You don't necessarily need it, but it's nice. And the other one is the high low, so you'll get the high and low for the day. Now you can see right now I'm getting a whole bunch of dots here because I've put too much information in the market watch window. You can take your mouse over to where it turns into a bilateral arrow and just kind of expand it out so you can fit all the information, if you even want the information. Okay? I'll go ahead and leave it here uh, simply so that you can see what your options are. All right? And, and, of course, any one of these columns can be adjusted as well. Okay? All right. If you want the ability to make the columns different widths, Go ahead and uncheck the auto arrange. If you don't like the grid for whatever reason, you can uncheck that as well. If you like a cleaner looking market window without the horizontal and vertical lines, you can do that as well. You know, whatever you're comfortable with. All right. Don't ignore this list. This list is what you are going to be focusing on throughout the day. Make sure it reflects what you actually analyze. And, and do. It doesn't take very long to do it, but take the time to make these customizations. Okay, so once you've got a customized list that you're comfortable with, we talked a little bit how to open up a new chart, how to change a chart. Okay, now I don't know about you, but my trading world does not exist with a single chart. Uh, the great thing about this platform is, and I'm going to go ahead and move this window over so we have a little bit more real estate. And uh, just, just uh, if you want to show of hands, or you can just, it could be rhetorical as well. How many of you are trading from either a single monitor system or a laptop? I know I was traveling the last couple weeks, and my world was a 13-inch MacBook. So real estate was really valuable. When I'm back at home, I've got a, a four-monitor setup, so I've got a whole lot more real estate. You know, the most important thing, in my opinion, is for me, and I think for a lot of you, because the polls show that most of you are technical traders or chart-based traders, are these, these charts. Okay? And with that in mind, 
you're probably looking at, I'm guessing, at least two, if not four, maybe more charts at the same time. So the real estate becomes really valuable. You'll notice that we've got the toolbar up here, okay? Sometimes the toolbar is going to have more individual icons that will, that will fit in a single view, which means that sometimes we're going to have to move certain bars down, but then what does it do? It takes away some of our real estate. You know, I'll tell you, I, don't, I haven't met anybody who really knows every nook and cranny about this platform. It's just, it's unbelievably powerful. Like I said, there's some of us who are drivers and some of us who are kind of mechanics slash engineers. I consider myself a driver. I need to know how to navigate the market. For those of you that don't know me, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a private trader and an author, and I'm speaking you today, speaking with you today from my home office in, in nice and sunny South Florida. Well, not sunny right now, but <laughs> I'm talking from my home office. So my goal with what I want to share with you today is how you can use, I think, the, the most effective tools and tactics, how you can make this as applicable as possible. All right, so these are things that I do. And of course, if there are questions that I haven't, that, that you have that I haven't covered, email me. If I don't know the answer, I don't mind saying I don't know, but I will find someone who does and get back to you. Okay? All right, so take a look at, and I see a lot of you are on single monitors and laptops, so this definitely applies to a lot of you. So take a look at what I just did. I just lost an, a nice slice of area by moving this, this toolbar down here. Okay? For the most part, I'm going to need these toolbars at some point. But if you realize that you're not using the toolbars that often, if you go here, you'll notice that your view, all these drop-down menus here will give you access to all the different choices you've got in terms of tools and views and so forth. Go to the View drop-down menu. As you can see here, you'll notice that you can actually remove certain toolbars. Okay? If you notice, it's four. Standard, Charts, Line Studies, Periosity. Now, obviously, here's your standard, okay, the one that the expert advisor is attached to. Uh, it also has the New Order uh, button on there. So I don't know that I necessarily want to get rid of this one. Here's my Line Studies. Okay, here's my Periosity. Okay. And, of course, here's my Chart Toolbar. So of the four... I know I'm going to use probably something from each one of them. So the choice of removing one really isn't a smart one. So what I recommend is customizing the toolbars. If you find that you're not able to fit them, you don't want to lose this real estate, but go ahead and remove certain icons that you don't believe you're going to use. Okay? And you can do this for each toolbar. The way you do it is you right-click the toolbar that you want to customize and then the specific icons that are included within it right now will show up. So if I knew, for example, that I don't trade, for example, the one-minute chart, I can absolutely remove the one-minute chart from my periodicity toolbar. Let's say I don't look at the monthly. I can remove that too. And what I've effectively done is shorten the toolbar number one and going back to the idea of focusing only on those things that you use. A need. I've effectively done that. Okay? And I can do that for each one of these toolbars. Again, just right-click, go to Customize, and you can remove those particular tools that you don't necessarily use. All right? Okay. All right, so the next thing that we want to do, and, and by the way, the whole goal is to get this thing so we can have the most real estate. The next thing we want to do is take a look at this terminal window down here. Now, you don't want to ditch the terminal window. You don't, want to lose, you, don't want, you don't want to lose the information that's here. Everything from your trades to your account history to the awesome Dow Jones news feed we have here. This is awesome right here. Um, not to say I'm a fundamental trader, but I have to at least have some sort of way of understanding some of the fundamental psychology that's going to affect price. But we'll talk more about that in, in subsequent, subsequent lectures, how we marry and respect, say, our preference for chart-based or technical-based trading, but doing so without ignoring the very valuable psychology that comes from, from fundamentals. Okay? But the news is here. 
Uh, my alerts are here if I create an alert. Okay, uh, mailbox, communications via IBFX, and of course my journal. 